Now, here comes the music. Well, it's Tuesday night. It's 8 o'clock. Do you know where DJ's at? I know where I'm at. I'm here with you. Hi, everyone. It's Buddy with the DJ Roundtable. We're here live on Twitch. And if you're watching the rebroadcast over on YouTube, you missed the fun and excitement on Twitch. So uh, make sure that you uh, get a chance to go over to our Twitch page. It's TBM Productions underscore Buddy. And follow us on Twitch. You guys not only see me DJ on Twitch and doing music videos, but also you can catch the show live. And you can actually ask questions. And we have a great panel, as always. I always try to have great DJs. And tonight's no different than any other night. Uh, hopefully, we'll have some other guys drop it in in a little while. Uh, you know, I I have two great DJs here. Uh, one pretty far north and one pretty far south. So, uh, Aaron, I know you've been on the show before. Uh, and then, uh, I know you've been on the show before. So, tell tell everyone where you're at and a little bit about your business. Uh, uh, me go first yeah, or yeah, go ahead. oh um well hey everybody um uh, i'm dj shadarian i'm a dj teacher if you don't know i got a podcast watch podcast each and every wednesday i upload and on fridays i will talk and have a sit down q a and ask about dj talk other than that uh me and uh i've been djing for a long time period of time and Got a gig that's coming up this weekend, and I'm um, going to knock that out of the way. And I've been DJing for about, like, so many years. I don't know how to count on my fingers or my toes, literally. It's been a long time, but I'm glad that I'm here. And <laughs> this podcast turned out great, and we're going to try something new today. So let's go. There you go. Aaron, my brother nice. from the Great White North, go ahead. You betcha. Uh, it's Aaron the DJ coming to you from Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Um, yeah, I'm up north a bit, and uh, I'm a single op uh, DJ. I do all kinds of promobile events, and I do a little bit of club work, and I do festivals. Um, I've been DJing for a long time. I got two two weddings this weekend, and I got an invite to a festival. I'm not on the festival roster, but uh, I'm probably going to go and hang out with some friends who are. Um, yeah, I got a wedding on Thursday, another one on Saturday. Got, that's go. my immediate future. I got a lot on the go. How many, uh, how many more? Hey, uh, DJ Sharon, uh, I don't know, little bit of my talk right today. It is Tuesday. There you go. <laughs> no, is that one week? Oh, no man. <laughs> uh, how many more gigs you got left for this year? Uh, Shit, I'm really booked up to the point of December, and then New Year's come around. I'm booked up, booked up again. Um, in the month of August, about uh the end of thirtieth, the thirty first, I'll be not uh be booked, and then come around September, I will be booked again for the whole entire month. And then uh, Halloween is most definitely coming around the corner. Halloween is the most biggest thing that I'm gonna do this year. If you don't know whereabouts are you, Sheridan? Where 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 in the south? I'm in Mississippi. Oh nice. Yes. He's he's always I, where you you could be like uh, here in Chicago or up there in, in Canada. It could be twenty. Uh, yeah, I collab with I I'm not to love I'm not to me uh me and Apocalypse collab a lot. So yeah. And uh things like that. Uh so it's like October hits, we got a whole, literally, we do concerts on, like, live, like Twitch, Zoom, Instagram, Facebook. If you miss out, last, like, last uh concert that we had, like, we had, like, a DJ battle that everybody could show your skills and stuff. It really was not a battle. It was just to show how your skills is, how DJs come together and show their skills off. So that's how it was. So we all had, we had, DJ Apocalypse, DJ Cool Thing, DJ Reflect, um, all of them, like, mostly from off north and stuff like that. And really, I'm trying to uh, get that ready, and this year is going to be a bigger show this year than everybody else. So if you want to know, if you want to come on, any DJs that want to come on, let me know. And then if you want if you want to, uh, I will literally uh, link my uh, – 
they ain't going to uh, comment in the chat. And y'all can literally uh, hit me up after. And that's it. <laughs> Anybody, cool. y'all, y'all don't got any um, gigs coming up? I got 19 more weddings to go for this year. So I have two weddings wow. left, uh, this weekend. Nice. Next weekend. I have weddings every weekend until uh, December 31st. Uh, I have a Ooh. new wedding. So <laughs> Merry Christmas to you. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm still I'm still coughing a little bit. You know, I had COVID um three weeks ago, so I'm still coughing. And I guess that's a, a part for the course for this uh this variant. So it's just one of the things that uh still do a little bit of recovery. Had a wedding this past Saturday, and uh we'll touch base on that a little bit, but uh, Aaron, I I know you had a chance to fly the the friendly skies, uh, yep. or in, is Air Canada is it uh, Tim Horton Special Express? <laughs> um, oh man! And uh, I got a talk, chance to talk to you on the way back home, but you got to yep. go to uh, DJ Expo. So uh, yeah, I, you know I made you it to Atlantic chance- City. Um, I went through all the delays and all the all the garbage with the airports and stuff and uh, experienced it firsthand about what everybody's been talking about, how the flights are being delayed. Like I, I, I did a gig Saturday night, came home, what about three in the morning, unloaded my gear, had a good size nap, got up, loaded up my stuff, got ready to go. I was at the airport, um, took care of a whole bunch of like stuff before I left. You know what? Yeah. Got to do all your financial stuff before you go. Make sure you get paid for your gig, all the rest of that. And uh, I was <coughs> got to be because it's international. I have to be at the airport three hours early. That's OK. Then they delayed my flight three hours when I got there. So I'm like, you know, that's, that's, that's complicated. Cause that's that's six how hours. I was. Yeah, that's how I was last time because my flight got delayed when I went to. Um, it, I had a show up there in Texas and I had I literally I was on tour. And I had a like a plane delay, and I'm like, I know I had bombs, I literally had to fly, and I had to hurry up to get through the like airport, literally like quick to get to uh, first class. And I had like they said, you know what? Instead of you just getting on first class on Spirit, you just get your own plane, and just go because I understand you're a DJ, and you gotta be there on time and stuff like that. So I just said, okay, thank you, whoever yeah. did whoever did this. Thank you, whoever did it. Let's go. Hurry up and let's go. Because my plane, I, I was like, my manager had called me like, hey, you know your plane ticket got, your plane is delayed. and it, it won't come in till next morning. I'm like, we need to leave tonight so we can be there in the morning. <laughs> like, instead of just leaving on time, instead of leaving in the morning, just leave at night. Because literally, I was like. I was so confused, like, what are we going to do? How are we going to do this? Had all my equipment, like my turntable, my laptop, everything that I need for that day. And literally, the bus, the tour bus was already up there. And um, and it's like, when I, when I literally look, I'm like, the tour bus is already up there. Don't the tour bus supposed to meet us here or... Do is supposed to, and then she was like, "No, you just hop on the plane. We're gonna fly you there, and then you just meet everybody up there." And I literally was like, "Okay, I I don't need to be stressed no more. Don't need to be worrying about nothing." And so I just literally just go. And um, I was really supposed to. I was wanted to come to go see Bar and um, Rick Roy up that day, but I said, "Dang, I had I had a tour show that day, and I literally missed it out." So yeah. I really want to see that. Yeah, too. when you when you have to go places and you get a delay like that, and I'm sure it's twice as worse because you're going from you know Canada into U.S. going through uh, the T- not only awesome. TSA but also U.S. Customs. Yeah, you, know, you guys are Canadian. It's... You guys are our BFFs, but still, you know, yeah, I go through customs. Yeah, and you know what? I'll tell you what: the Americans treat us better than our own people treat us coming home. Yeah, because really, like all the time, all the time, I. I don't know. I don't know if it's just I relate with the guys there better, or it's just a respect thing. I show them respect; they got it right back. Um, going into was it back into Canada? I got fully checked. Yeah, coming back, they made a point of uh, you can either go in the back room or we'll we'll wipe you down here. And I says I got nothing to hide. 
Go ahead. So, okay, sir, undo your pants. And he did like around the belt and then belt me up and down right in front of everybody. And I'm just standing there going, oh, I didn't realize you wanted like the full meal deal here. It wasn't a cavity search, but I didn't get any of that on the way. To, I've, I've never had problems going down. I've never had issues going down. I literally just like me on um, general, like getting checked. I really don't even need it. I really do get checked every time when I like go on uh, first class. It's just for say, uh, just to be safe and things like that. And they like, they just check you from head first, check you on your, your shoulder, then your body, and then just tell you take <coughs> shoes. That's how oh, yeah. that's how my procedure is. But they don't tell I, me to take pants off. What I was no, like, they just just undo them so they could go around your. Yeah, uh, yeah, the monitor, make sure I don't got nothing in the back, like a nine or something like that in the yeah, back. So. the monitor, yeah, yeah. Uh, so what they, I always they, like is the uh, machine me. you go stand in front of, and you you have your, kind of your arms out, and it X rays yeah. you your clothes. Yeah, I know. And it's you like, know, you just you you can't kind of have your arms out a little bit, and just spins around yeah. you and X rays you, and it's like yeah, you see you, and they, you know, basically they see you naked. You know, they, they they're yeah. not looking at how you. Come is, how come that's not good enough? Why do you have to pat me down as well? Like, ain't no clear guns. <laughs> like, yeah, ain't nothing that clear. It's not. You just yeah. uh, all the thing you see, all movie. Th <laughs> literally, if you come check me, all the thing you just see in my bag is literally my laptop, cord that I need for DJ and something like that. That's the only thing you see, unless if I'm going on an actual trip without DJ. That's the only time you see you with something like that in my bag. <laughs> Other than that, <laughs> literally, like I'm, I'm used to just the one that you just walk fully just walk fully through with your whole body not the 360 one and then i'm used to the one that just the one like you just beep, 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 and then like that and then that's it yeah are they still making you remove your shoes because last time i flew i had to take my shoes off i that i have to do that every time when i go to my uh, office you do my shoes to. yeah okay. literally, i have to that. take my shoes i literally had to take my shoes off like why i gotta take my shoes off Ain't nothing in my shoes still. They're, they're making sure that it's not, and I have big feet, so it's like I, you know, put the shoes in the in the tray, put all my stuff in the tray, you know. Yeah. Um, it's it's like you have to okay, hold your whatever. passport out in your hand, and yeah, it's just like yeah, make sure no metal okay. on me. Walk through the metal detector. What was really cool is I got some advice from some of the guys, um, from another show, and they said like, "How are you going to get there?" Blah blah blah. What's your travel plans? Because it was real last minute, and I said, um. Well, I'm going to take a plane, rent a car. I'm going to jump in a car. And I'm going to drive from Philly to Atlantic City. I can rent a car right at the airport. And and one of the guys in there said, don't. Get on the train. Go to 30th Street Station in Philly. Go check out the old, it was built in 1929. Go get a Philly in Philly at the train station down on 30th Street. Go check it out. Like You're not going to get a better experience uh, of what Philadelphia is like than being downtown at the main train station downtown in Philly. And I said, you know what? Absolutely. Absolutely. I want to try that. And he said, it's only like 10 bucks or something like that to take the train. And, and he said, we've done this for 20 some years. We've always, it's a tradition. You got to go to 30th street station and, and just see it. And I'll admit he was right. You can take I got train. off the plane. I jumped on a train on the subway on the Sep Sep Septra Septa Septa yeah Septa Transit yeah yeah so I got to the Amtrak station and like I like things like um, art and I like things like um, detail and the detail that's in that station built by hand from 1929 by those hardworking people in Philadelphia and the and I see the 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 work that went into that station, I would not have seen that if I rented a car and I skipped past it, right? I took a thousand photos in there. I'm not going to lie. I got home. I did a photo dump. I, I checked my card. It was 1,000, just shy of 1,100 photos that I took on my trip. And uh, I filtered it down to a couple hundred and put it on all my socials. But uh, yeah, it was uh, awesome. Absolutely awesome. You know, well, what just, you we you guys share some of the pictures with me when you get a chance to. Now, I, yeah, I, sure. I know you had to do uh, basically planes, trains, and automobiles. And I heard that the other day. Um, yeah, and, an uh, if, to if you guys are out there watching, train. you guys don't know. Um, 
if you guys don't know, also, uh, there was a couple of events going on. One of the things I know Aaron got a chance to DJ uh, with yeah. the uh, Children crew from this Jackie yeah. News. He got a chance to DJ there, which was really cool. Yeah. And, it was really good. And then he was on the floor of the show for the whole entire time. And yeah. I know this Jackie News, a few other people were there uh, showing the floor. And, you know, they show each vendor real quick. How impactful was that show to you? You walked in. How was it a hit to you? Oh, man. When you walk through the door of the, the show floor, you have Pioneer set up, right? Immediately you walk in the door, Pioneer is right there on your left. And you come in and did it's like... Did you see like, I did. I did see Mr. J. Brandon, you bet. Yeah, I did. I did. Awesome guy. And, uh, awesome guy. Yeah, I got a T-shirt out of the deal saying hi. So I appreciate <laughs> the people over at Pioneer hooking me up with a shirt. Man, that was cool. And then they were shooting them off with a cannon. I got some videos coming up for you. Jay was shooting off the T-shirt cannon out of the booth, which was pretty cool. Okay, people... yeah. I, 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 let me ask you one thing. Oh, uh, yeah. I really don't want to ask. I really do want to ask this from another DJ percent of uh, who we're all with. What did you learn from? over there from the, the talk, everything that they did and uh, things like that. What did you learn from? It? A lot. The seminars? I mean, I mean, yeah, the seminars. Um, well, what I did learn from the show, from the expo, like from the actual sales floor and the product demo is that there's a lot of new intelligent equipment coming in the world of lighting. Um, something that, that nobody has talked about yet, like all of the other people I've seen so far haven't said anything about this yet. But there's this little box out, and you wait, can wait, tell. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, Aaron. So this yep. is an exclusive. Yeah, this, this is. is I'm trying to find so a photo on my phone. This, to... this is an yeah. exclusive to you guys who have not been to the show. This is before yeah. Rick Webb, before DJ Bar. I can go through a bunch of DJs over there. DJ yeah. Cleveland Terry. I have not there. seen anybody talking about this yet. And we're going to drop so it. Listen. We're going to drop it right now. I'm going to drop it for you. I'm going to find a photo of it. I'm going to try to make sure I got the right name of the of the machine. But it's this little box. It's a prototype unit. It analyzes the sound wave from the file, from your music file, and converts it to DMX. And it absolutely manipulates your lights to work with the frequency of the song like i have never seen intelligent sound driven lighting in my life it was so well done really i believe it was it was ai lighting artificial intelligence lighting or something to that effect and it was this little box i took a picture of it and i'm going to try to find it and i'm telling you it was probably my favorite product of the show well, i won't say favorite but it was up there because when he put on a couple songs, he's like, pick a couple songs, put it on. And it's a regular DMX in, DMX out, goes into your lighting, uh, just like any other DMX controller. But it's like the size of a couple cell phones. It is not big at all. You know, it's bigger than, it's like the size of a Big Mac box, maybe just a little bigger. And so you look at it. Is there a microphone at listening or is it connected to your PC? It's, via... it's coming out, it's coming out of your mains, out of your controller just like so, it, so it's coming out the back so it's coming out the back of the controller yeah just like a dmx would oh, same okay. it's so, awesome. so it's so it's like it's connected to XLR. The, uh, the slr and then yeah yep that's sweet oh so it, it was is xlr out into into the box and an xlr out into the speaker to the light to the speaker yeah and then dmx in the front out. yeah and unbelievable but there's no dmx involved the settings what you could do with this and what you can manipulate with it the the this it was unbelievable you can set up your own scenes if you want to you can set up your own chases if you wanted to but you don't have to because this thing intelligently does it for you and when they put up a song the song actually recognizes your wavelength as it comes down and it realizes it's coming to a build and then it starts building the lights up with the music and then when it drops when the drop kicks the lights cut and then explode i was the impact that the light made was absolutely amazing and i'm trying to find you the 
the name, the product name, but I see we'll it. It. I, I'll get it to you and I'll get it to you and we'll link it in the this, description. This sounds cool. I, I see that um Pioneer and Serato got some but going on the new uh Pioneer uh EDJ so, um something. I had to look back. Um that's the Serato that made something new that I really that, that came to my head that I really want to try out. And mm -hmm. Everybody, everybody know me. I'm that type of person that buy something that try to see something new <laughs> and then just put it up for something unless it's about really need it. But it's like I see Serato got great things like great, like it's I know it's gonna be a new software, uh, a new software for Serato. Okay. Uh, so I know that's gonna work co close to 2024 or 2025, close to that. Cause I know that. You guys so are watching updates. right now uh, out there in Twitch. Um, what do you guys think? Would you guys, what do you guys think of, of an intelligent AI system running your DMX lighting versus going in through and programming? You know, I had I to almost admit, bought it. Um, I almost I, bought it on the spot. I I, I I'm I'm very I'm very very in, in interested in this product. Um, I uh, DJ John C uh, from Boston. Uh, help me get some learn some DMX stuff and help me out tremendously. And uh, talking yeah. to a few other great DJs about DMX and has helped me do DMX uh, much more than I first started. And um, little the you I talked about before the small little U King moving heads. They're on Amazon. They're one hundred and ninety bucks, one hundred ninety two dollars. They're not very not super super bright. They're nice small little compact lights. Um, I, you can put them on, on the edge of your table. They're just, you know, just enough to throw a little bit of light. They're not going to light up a whole entire room. They're not going to light up, you know, uh, like a grand interest or something like that. They're a nice throw up a little bit of light. They're nice, small, little moving heads. I DMX those and ran them, um, kind of DMX and, you know, doing this ceiling going around, chasing, changing color and changing gobos and stuff. <laughs> it took me you know, 25, 30 minutes to write that basic program. Because again, it's something I don't do all the time. If this unit would make a better show than the level I'm at, and I'm probably at level one. I'm at like some people I know are at like level 10 or 11. Like Matt is at like a 10 or 11. There's some people up the way up there and they, you know, they do sound switch or they, like I, I use Chave, um, <laughs> Some people use ADJ, you know, there's all different software out there, but this can be equal to those kind of levels of expertise because it's actually reading the sound level and the sound wave and figuring out, okay, fine, great. Like beginning of like yeah. um, uh, of the weekend's uh, uh, blinding lights, how it starts up and just imagine like the lights come up, you know, you hear that beginning part and it comes up, the lights come up and like hit you. Then all of a sudden when the beat, beat, beat starts hitting, they start doing stuff. It just, you know, you start getting stuff like that. Or uh, you go into Sandstorm. Yep. Just imagine doing and the, the with build Sandstorm. on The build on a couple of the songs that they played on the, in the demo was awesome because you can watch you can watch the waveform on the box. And you can see there's where it's LCD coming in. On the box? Yeah, there's a screen on the box. I think it was 800 bucks US. I'm still looking for the product here. I, I took so many photos, but uh, it was unbelievable. Aaron, you got to come on here better prepared. <laughs> oh, I know, I know. <laughs> this you know is this, 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 this is his first time on. This is his first time on. Let me go to my. He's been on once before when we're, when we were on uh, Instagram. Yeah, just like you've oh, yeah, been yeah, on yeah. before too, uh, a couple times, you know. And I'm glad again. I want to thank you guys for coming in over here, especially move over to Twitch. And again, this will be repeated onto. My YouTube channel, it'll go uh, Monday at 7 o'clock. Usually that's what I'm trying to hit for. And if you guys are watching live right now, again, don't be afraid to talk in the chat, ask questions. We're here to answer yeah. questions. You yeah, I'm, little, I'm, looking on my phone. I'm literally looking on my phone right now. I'm looking at the chat right now. Uh, if you need to ask any don't questions, don't say anything right now. Well, so. <laughs> anything y'all need to ask me, ask me. Uh, yeah, I'm about yeah, to see if you I guys have questions, don't be afraid to ask. We're, we're here to answer questions. And again, if you're watching this on the replay on YouTube, come on over and watch it over on uh, 
watch it on Twitch when we're here on uh, Tuesday nights at 8 o'clock Central Time. So 9 o'clock Eastern Time, 6 o'clock Pacific Time. So again, if you're if you're in the area, you know, it's 9 o'clock Eastern Time, 8 o'clock Central Time, 7 o'clock Mountain, 6 o'clock Pacific. I think Hawaii is like 3 o'clock or 4 o'clock in the afternoon if you're out in Hawaii. Alaska is, you know, That's a lot. That's really... I really want to go there to DJ just on and on the beach or something like DJ that. DJ in Hawaii? <laughs> yes. I can, I, can, I can see you with a grass skirt DJing. Doing this. <laughs> hula, 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 hula. We're, we're, in a, we're, in, we're in LA. I just, I would just be like one of those big, huge Samoan guys. I'm just fitting with them. Like, damn. <laughs> hey, all right. <laughs> hula, hula, hula. <laughs> They they out dance me though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's go yeah. to the um. But yeah, literally um the new um I got wait new changes coming up on the podcast um this week. So make sure you turn your post notifications on because literally you do not want to miss out this episode. Literally. We've been. So where can they find your podcast at? You can find you can find it on Apple Podcasts if you don't want to. If you can't get it on YouTube, you can find it on YouTube. Find it on YouTube. Everything is in my literature is on my Instagram. If you don't have Instagram, I can hook it up. Facebook, anything like that is on all social media. If you want to look on YouTube, Twitch, uh, Restream. Uh, what else? Do you have a link tree? Yeah, have I have a link. link. Yeah. You know what? Post up your link tree in the yep. comments later. Put a comment yep. on your link tree, and that way we can hit all your socials at the same time. Yep. Hit the, put I'll, your I'll stuff in, you. the, in the comments section. Yeah. And that that's way, what, you know, that's, that's the that's the new that's the new connection for all DJs. Yeah. <laughs> literally, link tree. So there you have that, it. Literally, you have literally you have your TikTok right there. You have yep. your Instagram, your Facebook, yep. your YouTube channel, link tree. everything else you do, email. Everything that you got right is all right there on this lot. And did you, um, find, did you part, find your pitch? Did you find a picture, Aaron? <laughs> yeah, I found it's called AI Light Show. So I was right. It AI was artificial Light intelligence, show. AI light show. And that was the box. And there was a few different buttons in there that you could program. There's a couple blanks in there. And then they had they had dial settings in there. If you like the I love old school dials. You know the old mixers with the big dials and stuff on them. They had the four dials through the middle, and then they had a couple touch button buttons and that LCD screen in there. Uh, it looks like a prototype. It looks like they're not done with it yet, but I would have bought it. Really, I want a spot. You like me? <laughs> I will buy anything that comes to my head. <laughs> yeah, I want it. I want to try it. I want it. I want to see what it can do or what it can't do. Like, let's fire it up. But really? the demo of it was amazing. Do they have a website on heard... there, or do they have? AI Light Show is the company name, so that I imagine their website's probably A period I period or is it just AI? Yeah, yeah A period I, period I period Light Show Light Show, and I just googled it. It's Light Show one word, two words on it. I think it's just the one. But the new podcast. Oh, just to let y'all know. Yep. This Friday, this the new podcast. I got a new podcast room, and you most definitely y'all minds gonna be blown when you see this. I mean, new mics, new screens, new intro sound. Everything's gonna be most definitely. We've been putting hard work for this. Literally, this this that's why um, we ain't been doing podcasts for the last months or so. We've just been trying to get things ready. For the podcast to get ready for it when it come back. So this Friday, literally you just see a, a, we're gonna be asking ah, you. I think I found it's, it. I did too. It's AILightshow.com and there's no spaces, no dots, no nothing. It's AILightshow.com. Yep. That is, is the one. That's, that's, like, a, that's, that's, like, box, that's like a mixer. It looks like yeah, it looks like a tiny it's not the size of a Pro Mix 6. Like the new Mackie mixer, the the Pro Mix, it's not even that big. So the form factor on your table. So if you had like a small Yamaha, you know, two uh, XLR in, and this box, they're like the same size as the small Yamaha, and like it's got a couple buttons, couple dials on it, four dials on it. 
Mr. J- Mr. Jazz has it on box. there. Mr. Jazz has the link on there. Thank you, Mr. Jazz. John Jazz, man. The guy's always on top of everything. Yes, he is. He's an awesome DJ. If you haven't done so already, uh, it, it, we're we're all on Twitch here. We DJ on Twitch. Uh, yeah. John Jazz never DJ DJs on Twitch. So if you guys have, again, guys come over and watch the show, and you're looking for DJs to watch on Twitch, and you want you want to sit back and chill and listen to great music and watch music videos, I do music videos. Aaron does music, uh, Sharon into music, and then yeah. John Jazz does music videos too. So if yep. you're looking for that, kind of I do stuff, a lot of things on Twitch. I, I game on Twitch. I DJ on Twitch. I ask Q and A questions on Twitch. I do everything awesome. on Twitch. Twitch is like my other best friend, <laughs> other than um YouTube. If YouTube go out, we go on to Twitch. <laughs> yep. Twitch and, and Twitch and uh, YouTube. <coughs> I think Twitch, YouTube, and Instagram are my big three. Yeah, eight and three, because if literally if Instagram uh will cut you. Instagram will cut you out in a heartbeat. Like, literally, it will cut you out when you play your songs. That's why you got to put it. I don't own copyright. They're very worried about copyright versus here. They're a little more free, and we can do more with it as of right now. That may change. Who knows in the future? Hopefully not. But, you know, well, we'll keep it that way. And then YouTube. YouTube just changed their algorithm. I heard from another DJ, um, and I guess a couple of famous DJs, big big names on YouTube. Uh, yeah, I got problems. to talk to them about it in in person. Um, that was a, a topic that came up while I was down there. Um, I was with Mike Marquez, and and big shout out to DJ Mike Marquez. <laughs> I appreciate your time. I appreciate your skills. I appreciate your knowledge and giving me your time. Thank you, Mike Marquez. Um, I'm a big fan, and I got to meet him and hang out. And we were in the middle of a seminar, and um, DJ Bar walks in the room. Right after Mike Marquez just said, YouTube is cracking down on the algorithm and they're pulling people's um, videos. They literally and put he walked they literally in the room. Some of our, they literally pulled some of our old videos. And literally, yeah. I, was li- I was literally looking back like, yeah, gone. Literally, I was li- like- literally bar, don't, if bar don't even go on YouTube. If only time Bar go on YouTube anymore is like when he's got some new equipment or or he want to have a Q and a just later on his podcast if he collab with uh Rick well, well that's why would you want to put in all that work to have it have it taken away like why would you want to do it it's just like all his it's, vlogs it's, are great and it's crazy how uh, it's crazy how bar had did all the things like how tutorials how to like how to yeah. fix your board and stuff like that they took some hit them videos and i'm like what what is going on with youtube now yeah, they took all his videos. I asked him about it, and he said, "Yeah, the the algorithm picked up the music that were in the the wedding vlogs and all my all my gig logs, and they're gone." He said, "I lost, I lost a lot," it and he, you could like, tell he's pissed. Like he put a lot of blood into that, and he put a lot of work into that. And that's I a lot of money, him. a lot of revenue lost for him. Done. Of, yeah, I mean a lot. That's why you don't see Bar be posting nothing really general. Only yeah. time when Bar posts is something on his own is on social media, like yeah. Instagram and Instagram and um Snap. That's Snapchat. That's the only time you see Bar post anything. Yeah, about a and gig was, or something like nice that. Too. And you know, I'd be pretty miserable, I think. But the fact that he hit a couple of seminars that I was in, you know, I I was it was good to meet him. You know, he was there for a purpose. He was there for a reason. He was there to sit in on some stuff. You know, just like the rest of us. I mean, because yeah, I, I know a lot of, and I, I know it was a lot of fans that was looking at the bar, and literally, bar was like, bar played a lot of great hits, a lot of great hits by DJ, and literally, a lot of people was looking him, and he literally up, and he literally uploads his videos on each and every fr- like Fridays or something like that in between, and I'd be looking like on my YouTube, like every time when I get a chance, I looking like. When is Bar gonna upload his video? Oh, someone came in your room. Oh, we got guess. I know. Okay, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's really how it is. Hello I, and welcome. I, <laughs> <laughs> is that is that your uh, sister and brother? Siblings, yes. Hi, hi, hi. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the how show. You how you doing? <laughs> All right. Bye bye. Bye. 
Be safe, guys. Is is like I know, like what I was saying was, it's like with Bar, it's like Bar don't even like post nothing. Rick Well, he Rick Webb don't even post nothing literally no more. And Rick, only thing Rick Webb posts is like last minute gig logs or something like on podcast. That's the only time when Rick Webb posts. And I've been looking like. Each and every Friday, I always go look at DJs. Like, I can't even see no other DJs that DJ like no more. And no, it's, I used to watch like, DJ I, I, had, all the time, too. John I used Simmons. To watch Rick, I used to watch Rick Webb <laughs> and Barr back to back. Like, it's, yeah. what, it was like, it's like if Rick, if like I'm watching Barr, Rick Webb is in the subscription. If, yep. if I watch Rick Webb, Barr is in the subscription. It's like back to back. And I'm yeah, like, man. I'm like, it's there's like, a bunch of guys that don't post anymore. John Simmons, DJ Whoopig, he's he's an awesome. I loved watching his YouTube. He's stuff. an awesome guy. Just, he's an awesome dude. You know what? I got to meet him. I met Cleveland and him five minutes apart. Cleveland come up and he at sat the at the table just at, uh, after after the club gig. Um, he came over and he sat down at a table up at the burger joint I was at, and I got I got to meet him. Super nice guy. No, I did not ask if he was from Cleveland. No, I. He's from California. His first name's Cleveland. Yeah. I know. <laughs> it's like <laughs> shared in here. It's like actually he's so shared in Illinois. Now you spell yeah. the same way. I told him. I said, "I'm not here to ask where you're from." <laughs> Just <laughs> kind of laugh. He got off on the right foot, and I talked to him for a bit, and he was super nice, and and gave me, you know, gave me five minutes. I sat down and I told the guy that I was with, JC from Mexico, shout out to JC Mexico. He's a good dude. I said, the only guy that I've yet to meet at the show and I've really wanted to meet was John Simmons. And I'm just, and he literally walked around the corner and sat down at the table next to us. Wow. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Wow. Y'all and JC looked at me and goes, what? Man. I said, that's John Simmons. He's like, no. I said, yes. So I, I'm like, I'm but Aaron, Aaron, you haven't met the biggest YouTube star on YouTube, me, in person. I know. No, I'm, just kidding. I'm, I'm waiting for you to come to the show here. <laughs> I'll pick your ass up at the airport, man. I'll take you. And we're gonna book you up here, and then I'll take you. I'll pick you up at the airport. We'll go hang. Well, out. again, we both have F350s for mm. pickup trucks, so you know that we yeah. both have that. So I, I'm not, I'm not gonna play. We're both Ford guys, so yeah, we're both Power Stroke guys, so. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna about that day, one day, so. I'm gonna be uh, uh, then the other DJ I watch. I don't see DJ on stop um on a lot on YouTube videos. He's cut back a lot. Matt uh DJ Salsas, he's still doing gig logs. Uh yeah, I, I thought I thought for sure he'll come on tonight. He's not here. Um a lot of people a lot of people talk a lot of people talk because work and People gotta go to work in the morning. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I gotta talk. I gotta talk to Matt and see if maybe maybe switch to another day. Because you know, I, I like having him on here. Again. He's a he's an awesome guy, awesome dude, and it just it's it's great having him on here. And I wanted to know if he got yeah. affected by this new algorithm because I just put up a new gig log onto uh, YouTube, um, and I made the songs six seconds each. Cause I think okay. I think you told me Aaron was seven seconds. Uh, yeah, down to. seven seconds now is the algorithm. You can't break seven seconds. So I'm down to six seconds per song. So it's like four minutes and thirty seconds the whole thing. Uh, yeah, I have some B-roll. I have some, uh, you know, uh, music on there that is non-copyright, uh, you know, copyright-free music. But it's um, it's all. The, you know, it's all the music on there that people are dancing. It's only a small uh, a sliver of people dancing. It's like you see people yeah. dancing. I couldn't get everything I wanted to get in there just because I was worried about the algorithm. And yeah. it's like J Book don't even go. J Book, uh, DJ J Book, he don't even be, um, you know, get it, um, lay it on YouTube no more. A lot of people, a lot of DJ that you know that. Do gig logs a lot and then post it on YouTube. They don't literally post on YouTube nowhere because oh, I don't blame them. I don't it's blame them. Cr- it's crazy how now nowadays YouTube is getting the copyright issues and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, well is it? I understand. So the one the, the video I just dropped of my trip, I had to take out all the background volume in the airport. There's music in the train. Some dude at a boombox. Music. 
There was people broadcasting in the train station. There was music everywhere. I had to delete all the music off like the final cut. I had to cut all the music out and get that royalty free stuff, which is okay. Some of it's okay. And, and overlay it. And what I should have done, maybe it's done some voiceover, but I just did it all like that. And I cut all the music out. Actually, I'm surprised I fell asleep at 10 views. I'm up to 70 now. And uh, I'm happy with that. On mine, I dropped it on YouTube. Um, Aaron the DJ on YouTube. And I got now, yeah, just 70 views now on it. And I put it out yesterday. That's good for me because my channel is new and small. So, hey, that's all right. But, yeah, for that reason alone, when I talk to those other guys and they're like, you're filming this, make sure you cut all the audio out. Put all, put that royalty-free stuff on there. And don't don't use any background music. Even somebody playing with their boombox in the background, like the dude on the train, don't leave that in there because it'll be gone. Uh, YouTube so. literally cut every YouTube cut everything out. Literally, it's like now nowadays. I don't think I really do. I don't do gig vlogs like that no more. I don't think I do is go post on like reels on Instagram and tell uh show like reels yeah. that, that short like short reels that I'm doing DJ. That's the way to go anyway. That's the way to go. It is. Literally, now, nowadays, everything upgrading and things like that. It's like, I don't think I do now. It's like when I DJ, I just take a, video, a short video on Instagram, like literally a short video, just say, here, this is where I'm at, and then just upload it to Reels on Instagram. Well, well the great thing is that this show is on YouTube, <clears throat> and because there's no music, there's no sound you know, other than some background noise, me, me coughing right now, you know, yeah. <laughs> uh, other than that, there, there, there's no really sound other than us talking. So this goes on YouTube where, you know, there's no file language. There's no, nothing, yeah. you know, nothing. Well, else here I can, I can crank everything. up some tunes if you want. I got some Nelly loaded up. I can play for you. <laughs> please, please go ahead and do it. Let me mute you real quick. You know, <laughs> see how fast it gets taken down. Um, yeah. It's, it's, it's well, too yeah. bad the way things are going. I don't understand why we can't do that. It really yeah. bothers me, especially when we're mixing stuff in and out. Like if we're actually showing a show, you play what a minute, minute and a half of a song. A you're not even playing the whole thing, song. and you're mixing out somebody else's song, and you're mixing in a different song, minute and a half at the most. What? Like well, why? It's all about revenue. It's our, they're, they're, it's all about revenue from the record companies. I know. The record companies, yeah. you know, they get their revenue. They want to hear it. They want their their cut. And I understand, yeah. you know, if you get your music from legitimate sources, like, you know, promo again, shout only. out to promo I'm paying only. for. Yeah. If we got promo only licenses in Canada, you also have to pay for a connect music license to be a licensed DJ. So if I'm paying $600 a year for promo and for my connect license, why can't I put it on YouTube? I'm paying for a public license. Why can't I post? Why can't I put it out? And it's, it's crazy. It's crazy how, how nowadays now. You can't literally. It's the point of you. You DJ. What's the point of us literally getting copyright and we know that it's hit songs that we play and yeah. things like that? It's like we get the crowd crunk. We 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 getting the people on the dance floor. We we yeah. we uh cocktail hour. We we uh doing everything that we can best to make the crowd get yeah. on the dance floor. Right. And it's like every time when we do the snippy, it's like. When we do a snippet, it's like every time it gets cut out, like every time literally, like why why we get it cut out on this? Let, let me ask the two of you a question. Let's say you go to YouTube and you see a DJ that you haven't seen before and they play a couple like like three, four bangers back to back. Is that not something that you'd watch not just once, but maybe twice, maybe three times? Yeah. Would your viewing go up if YouTube allowed copywritten music to get played would you watch more <laughs> videos i would yeah, watch it if it's like if I, 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 would. I probably would i probably i really probably would if it's like great hits like eminem tupac yeah. any, anybody like that i would yeah. really listen to like great hits i would yeah. literally watch it back, back to back and then i yeah. would give i would literally give you support start on your like youtube channel i would yeah. give you support come in and chat you're doing yeah. a great thing keep doing keep, keep doing what you're doing I'm yeah. watching your videos every I time. I would subscribe to these guys. YouTube would make more money if they allowed the music than not. And it's, again, it's, sure it's, 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 
I'm uh, sure they're afraid ahead. of the legal side of the record companies. They have partnerships with these record companies. I yeah. don't understand why I can't pay YouTube a fee. Yeah. Pay them a double fee. My, double my Prime membership. Double double the whatever, the YouTube premium. Whatever yeah, YouTube, yeah, YouTube premium. Double it. Now. Pay it's them a YouTube fee premium. and say, here's my fee for yeah. music. I Let want me everything to be licensed. And then yeah. they can go to, they can take it, they can write an algorithm software. If algorithm because Spotify pick out the song, algorithm software say, yeah. okay, songs. Okay, yeah. go to the record companies. He paid for the license. Is this okay? The record company goes, here you go, thumbs up. Go ahead, put it out there. Do a whole entire set. Yep. I don't care. All they have to do is match what Spotify. Spotify but it doesn't pay the artist jack. Like, they pay the companies nothing. Spotify does not pay the artist any money. Like, it's very, very, very that small. Is there, YouTube like, could that... get away with that. YouTube and could do it. YouTube can do that, but the thing yep. is... Spotify, really, truly, technically, some people really don't even use Spotify. Really, is if you got Apple, oh, no, I don't, I don't like it. If, if you got, I, only thing, on software you use is like Apple, or or or, or like good or, or any any music app that you can download. That's what you use. So Other one of the software, Spotify, one of the softwares um, I use for wedding planning is I do Vibo. I use I had a little screw up. I had for first dance song to open the dance floor. I I love. I want the customer to pick the song to open the dance floor. How do you want this, the night to feel? Um. So, I had it uh, on one, but somehow or another, it went to um. It went uh, to um. Where did it go to? Uh, it went to Infinite, and it was on Infinite. It uh, decided to um, it, it decided to allow them to put as many songs they wanted to. So this br uh, bride, uh, about what, um, I want to say maybe a week or so ago, uh, decided that. Uh, they, uh, no, not a week ago, probably a couple weeks ago, that they um, were going to take and upload their whole entire, um, their whole entire uh, Spotify playlist and have this huge playlist on um, on there, and on that playlist, um, they had like I want to say like 70 songs in this playlist because they were like they thought they had to pick had to pick every song. And it's like, no, that's what you pay for a DJ for. You're paying a DJ to do the music. Yeah. That's Spotify. I just got it's, a, the, it's the thing. I just got one of those. What? Same deal. A list from the bride and the groom is like 10 miles long. My that's how it is. Literally like if I'm doing a wedding I like to do specific like what which genre you want to have country music. Give me five country music, hip hop, whatever genre it is hip hop, old school blues, country, anything like that. I don't want to make the list longer because it's literally gonna make the gig so, log. Uh, go ahead. I do have a question? Have any of you used the Rockwell RF ones? Uh, I have not. I have the Rockwell Rock wedges. Yeah, and I've I never think used them. Actually, I the gentleman who's coming in right now, uh, DJ Mike James, I believe he has used Rockville RF ones. Uh, hey, Mike Audio Connect, and we'll welcome him to the show <laughs> as he's and joining I'm... us from his uh, humble studio. Oh, oh, yeah. literally, like you'd be on your phone. It literally take time to connect on your phone. Yeah, it just takes a minute or two. Hey, he's on. He's on. There we go. Hey, Mr. James, you go. how are you? Finally. <laughs> so I, we actually, good timing. We just had a question come in. And thank you for the question, by the way. Uh, it asks, have any of you used the Rockville RF1s? I have them. And what do you think? What's, what's your opinion? What do you think? Before, um, I just want to say hi, and I got I got to step out, 
And okay. I appreciate you, buddy. Thanks for having me in. Aaron, thank you, you so guys. much. I'll see you sure, later, Aaron. man. DJ, it was good to it was good to meet you. And Mike, you guys have yourselves a great show. I do gotta step out. I'm sorry. No problem, man. I'll see you later. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Aaron. Appreciate the information thank you, buddy. in that light box, too. We'll talk more again in the next yep. show about your, you trip, your trip. You bet. Take care. Okay, Mike. So what do you think of the RF ones? I'm I'm DJ Mike James out of Central Illinois. I do have the RF ones. I bought ten of them. Um, it's a decent light in the sense that, I mean, they're they're well built. They're a little underpowered, but what we need them for, uh, you figure it's a one twelve watt diode. So as far as accent lighting go, I mean, it works pretty well. The the RF remotes work real nice. I mean, so all that stuff syncs up and it does a real good job. The wireless DMX, if you're using that with the unit, you know, using one of the units as master and all the other units as slaves, you're very limited in what you can do with them. I mean, very limited. Uh, and then you can't use a remote at that point. And they won't sync up with any of the other wireless technologies. So food for thought. If you're running them by themselves, I mean, you can get more out of them, I guess. But if you're trying to match them up or pair them up with anything else you got, it's just not really going to work out great. So there you go. And you do like the Rockville Rock Wedges more than the RF ones? Or... Oh, I love them. I absolutely love the Rock Wedges. And I did. I just released a video as a, on a first look on the Rock Wedges today on my YouTube channel. Yep. So uh, make sure you check that out. But uh, those things are a dream. It's a 3 by 18 watt triangular, which will fit nice in a corner. 54 watt, 48, 40 degree angle beam, complete wireless DMX with seven different uh, frequencies. So you can set groups up in different wireless DMX formats. Oh, man, those things are fantastic. I, I really, really like them. Easy to program. Set one as your IR. Turn the IR off on all the other ones. And you can use that one and run every light in the room on wireless DMX. That's fantastic. And they're actually, they're the cheapest light in the game, man. If you think about it, Nest 4 is about 159 bucks. A Rockville Rock Wedge is about $109. So it's really the cheapest stuff light in the game. Bang for your buck. That thing's a great light. Not so going the against Rock the Nest 4s or both lighting or any of that. What's up? On the Rockville Rock Wedges you're using them to transmit and talk to each other then, correct? Absolutely. Wireless DMX. And then I, I turn the IRR off on all the slave units, leave it on on my master, and I'll change every light in the room just by hitting the remote to that one light. That's fantastic. I mean, that's – and if you want to do that differently and set them up in different groups, you select one of the seven frequencies, and you can set – multiple lights up in separate groups doing different things and and i mean that's it, that technology is fantastic i really like it and they'll marry up with all the s4s all the bulk lighting all the sheds lighting it'll marry up with all those things perfectly best part 60s best part 50s which you know like we know are both s4s so yeah it's a great technology i really love those up lights if you're looking at up lights portably because i like the dj on a budget honestly i mean i kind of have to and uh, best price in the game, 109 bucks for a rock wedge. Everything else is 150 plus. So, and I will tell you, I just had the wedding I just did this past weekend. Um, I had. Hey, I'm gonna have to. Hey, I'm gonna have to leave. Uh, no problem, man. I'll see y'all later. Y'all have a nice night. You have a good night, man. Thanks for coming in. See you in the next mm -hmm. show. Don't be afraid. Okay. Again, guys, if you have not done so already, make sure you follow him on his podcast. Wednesday, he's got a new podcast coming out. He's also on YouTube. Make sure you follow him on YouTube. Show him some love. And again, if you're watching the rebroadcast, again, go over, subscribe to him on YouTube. Literally, See, tomorrow, is a, tomorrow is a, tomorrow. You don't want to miss out because it's going to be a new one today on Friday. It's going to be I, up, up I didn't catch your I didn't catch your name, bro. I'll, I'll check you out on YouTube, man. Uh, it's Darian Blanks. Um, yes, it's literally right there by name. I see. Right. Okay, I see it come up right now. Darian Blanks. I got you. I, I will. I will I'll send check you. Mike, if you need a link to him, I will send you a link to his Instagram. I will. Oh, okay, uh, perfect. I will send his Instagram to you, so that way you have that. Follow him on Instagram. He's an awesome dude. Uh, he teaches a lot of young up and coming DJs a lot of cool stuff. He's an awesome guy. I, I met him a, a couple years ago, and 
he's, he's just an awesome dude to have. And just uh, you, you didn't mean to you there, man. Sorry, yeah. you got to go. Just yeah. like everyone thank else you. we have on here, always awesome people. So thank you so much. You're welcome. All right, see ya. Be safe, man. So yes, I the uh, I, I sent you some pictures of the wedding. That was rock for rock wedges. I had. Oh, they look. It looked awesome. Yeah. And that right there, just I had two colors at the beginning, and then I changed it over to the sound active, but um, for dance floor. But the the rock wedges they do give a beautiful look, a beautiful amount of light. Um, for the price, they are a phenomenal steal. They are. I agree. Lowest price, I mean, for a quality lay with with an 18 watt, a three by 18 watt diode in them, I mean, for 100 bucks. I mean, it's really 100 bucks. See, you can't go wrong. So if you want to walk through real quickly for people listening and watching either on YouTube or on uh, live right now, how do you set up the rock, rock, rock wedges on the wires DMX? And how much distance do you can you have to put between the, the the units is it can you put them like you know six feet apart can you put them eight feet apart or is like you know is there a sweet spot have you found <laughs> um the wire they have built-in wireless antennas in them so i mean i haven't really stretched them out as far as i can i i mean i if you seen my last video i had those rock wedges sitting on opposite ends of that uh, of that banquet hall you know, and I had I didn't have any problem with them communicating to each other, and that was forty foot. You know, what I, mean? I mean, it was it was a big bank. We had four sections in that hotel. You know, so I mean, I didn't have it didn't have any problem communicating with that one in the. And I imagine if you're dating them together at whatever length, they're just going to communicate to the next one through the last one, with with their wireless antennas. Repeat the but as far as setting those up. As far as setting those up, what I found best was set them all the same. Set your sound active all the same because each one of those lights, and this video is actually going to come out next Tuesday where I, where I actually go in depth on how to program these oh, lights. Oh, we'll I have a video coming out. Some, there you go, guys. Next Tuesday, my videos are going to be hitting Tuesdays and Thursdays from now on. I got some cool gig logs coming up. I just came from D, uh, DJing over at the EIU for the women's volleyball game practice cutting my teeth on that it went pretty well i was i was super excited it was a lot of good fun for you, man. so good for you. that's gonna be that's gonna be a thing you know that's that's gonna be a thing for me so here is um this will give a release next monday on my youtube channel and i tagged you on the last uh one of you saw yesterday promote uh the uh, premiere <clears throat> but if you guys are out there watching uh out there on twitch right now or on youtube Make sure you, again, you follow Mike James. Make sure you also go over to Nathan343, DJ Fire. Um, I put a link to uh, uh, Nathan343 on the last one. Because um, DJ Fire, I don't know, for some reason, our YouTube, his his DJ Fire one doesn't want to come up. It comes all these other DJ Fire. So I went to his main channel, Nathan343, and then he has links there to all his other channels, which he has a, he has a bunch of channels. That guy has more irons in the fire. That anyone I know, <laughs> awesome. Yes, he does. Um, and is that the old jack of all trades? Yeah, he, he's that man is just just so busy. It's not even funny. <laughs> but um, just like you are too, you're especially doing uh, Eastern Illinois University uh, girls volleyball. That that that's cool as all heck. And yeah, they they provided <laughs> me like I got all their little service song clips or whatever, you know what I mean? So I do that for as you know, as our team comes up to serve. And I, like I said, it was my first time out there today and uh, it went pretty well. I, I mean, I'm, I'm tied into the press box and the house equipment, which is kind of awesome. You know, I'm not running any of my stuff, <laughs> you know what I mean? And it, man, it was, it actually was, it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to doing it this season. So yeah, make sure you check me out on that too, man. Yeah, you go big blue. All right, you know that that's that right there is an awesome thing to hear that you're you're just rocking it out with that. And then the other part also again coming out with the information on the uh, rock roll rock wedges. I saw the video today. Uh, great information, you know, the overview of them. I know you get the black ones. I have the white ones. Um, I like the white color because especially for weddings, they kind of blend in a little bit more onto the walls. 
And they just have a, a little more elegant look, but the black is nice, especially you want to hide them, you know, and, you know, a little more, more hidden um, on stuff. And that's, that to me is, you know, one of the things that they give a lot of versatility. And I know also uh, Nathan, uh, DJ Fire got some lights from Rick Webb. And it'll be interesting for him if he does it or you do it with him, a head to head competition between the lights and see which light is actually a better light. That would be kind of cool. Because with rock wedges, um, I will tell you, I do like them for a lot. Well, the one main difference is going to be it's got an extra 18 watt diode. You know what I mean? They're, or his are sixes. He's got the S6s. So they're six by 18s. We got three by 18s. It's going to be twice as bright. But they well, all I, marry I, I, up. I understand that part. That, the, yeah. part of the brightness. I'm talking about the color. Like, are how true are the colors? How how nice are the colors? You know, are how good are diodes? You know, that, that's the stuff I look at. How well the batteries they're, last? They're comp. I'm just saying they're comp. It's a it's a it's a quality applied. It's just you're gonna pay more for it. You know, so well, yeah, because you're twice as many LEDs. So yes, battery life. And, right now, the other thing also, I know that you did a battery replacement on one of the wedges. How hard and difficult was it to do? It, it was extremely easy. That video is coming out Thursday. This Thursday, that'll that'll that, that'll be my next video coming out in my new Tech Talk series where I go over working on some of the products that I get, you know, I mean, which I've had to do quite a bit, you know, especially with some Chave stuff and, you know, a few other items. But, I mean, Chave, I mean, it comes rattling in the box, you know, and then you open it up and figure out what wasn't tightened down, you know. Yeah, but um, Chave, I love Chave stuff. I love Chave's uh, DMX software, but I, I'm disappointed in some things with Chave, especially their. Uh, I have a bunch of their uplights, uh, the uh, wireless uh, battery operated uplights, and I probably I have eight of them. I probably say three of them right now now have bad batteries, and the batteries are the same price as a light almost. It's like three hundred and twelve dollars for a battery versus uh three hundred and forty dollars for a light and the battery which i sent you the battery um from uh rockville i bought i bought four batteries they're like 25 bucks each yeah that's amazing i mean another reason that you know that the rock wedge is awesome that you can change that battery out and it fixed the problem too so i and yeah rockville, like i said that video is coming out thursday but but yeah, it picks a problem. I have no problem with that thing taking charge. It stays on now. It's excellent. So yeah, and, and Rockville sells the battery. They'll, you call them up, and say, "Hey, I, I want to buy the battery." They're like, "How many do you want?" I said, "Send me four. I wanted to make sure I have some on the side because if it goes wrong, I want to be able to swap a battery out. You know, if I need to." And again, you have that video coming out on Thursday how to do that, and uh, I, I I know how I know how easy it is, and you did a video how easy it is. It's well, the reason was, is like when we were looking it up on YouTube and we were trying to figure out how, you know, can the battery even be changed on this? Because we didn't, you know, I mean, you just don't know if you, like I said, I, I do a disclaimer at the beginning of it where it says there are no user serviceable parts in this, in this piece of equipment. And that's not necessarily the case. So well, I, I feel like people tear was, apart the light. That's the thing. But replacing the battery, that's usually pretty kind of simple. <laughs> well, it, the connector. like I said, there there wasn't anything, out, there wasn't any reference material out there on how no. to do it. So if someone tried to pull the top off of that light, they're gonna have, they're gonna be in trouble. You know what I mean? So I mean, I'm telling you, take the feet off, take the bottom off, battery comes right out. Don't mess with the top part of it. You know what I mean? Like you don't want to get in all that. You know, I'm I'm just saying, like, just to point people in the right direction because there's a lot of screws on that. <laughs> Yeah, there's quite a few in the sense of what you'd start what you'd start taking apart, you know what I mean? Now, one of the things uh, I know you missed it, you were here earlier because again you had your gig, you and you again thank you so much for coming in after your gig. Uh Aaron, uh the DJ, um he dropped a big huge mind nugget earlier in the show. Um AILightshow.com and um Mr. John Jazz, a DJ, great DJ copied the um address i'm going to put it down here in the chat and chat it out as a link and i can send you the link as well uh uh mr james uh directly 
uh, because we talk offline as well. <laughs> and it yes. is a uh, $800 unit. It's not cheap. Uh, that's the price they're, they're talking right now. They're, they're at the, the show in uh, Philly, uh, not Philly, in Atlantic City. Um, and it is an intelligent DMX unit that actually reads the sound wave of the music coming into it via a, a DMX, I'm not sorry, DMX, uh, via um, um, via connection from your controller into the unit and then into your speaker. So you're taking your uh, your XLR connector cable, running it into this unit, and XLR out into your speaker, and it's intercepting, and not delaying it, just intercepting, reading the sound waves of the music coming in and through and going out to your speaker. And then it intelligently is an AI software that intelligently does stuff to the lights. And they were demoing it with Aaron and Aaron's watching this. And they had, I went to their website. Uh, again, the website links down below. Uh, if you haven't done this already, go to their website. I signed up already on the show live on my phone uh, for when <laughs> it comes in, because I want one. <laughs> um, and uh, they had some videos in there. I want to watch those videos. They look really cool. But Aaron was saying that it is a really cool thing. Uh, if it's AI, DMX controller, it does exactly what he was saying it's going to do. That would be cool as all heck. You don't have to worry about running a DMX software. Here, you just let this unit go ahead and do it. And it does it intelligently. Um, and that would so be you cool. have to add, you have to add like antenna dongles to your no, DMX has, lights. No, it DMX out. It has DMX out in the front and on, 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 the, on, the, on the back. So all you do is DMX out cable, one cable to one of those Rockville lights as your master. Right. Boom. Uh, you're talking about the up lights? Yeah. Oh. Just you tell you tell the software what you're doing, what you're doing up lights, and you change a color. And then you you it has it, it it basically it looks like a little mixer has a little LCD screen on it, and you tell it what you want it to do. You want to do stagnant colors for a time being. You could do that, and then what you could do is you when you turn the sound active, it controls the whole entire light show for you. No. So like think think about uh, I I was talking to Aaron about this. Think about the beginning to the weekends. Um, blinding lights that beginning part when it, right. the, the keyboards come in and the synth comes in and you hear that coming in before the beats start dropping and it just ramps up just imagine a, having a light show to that song and the beat drops boom boom or to sandstorm right the day room yeah think um, about that all your off lights around the room doing a light show to sandstorm Right. No, I got you. Uh, yeah, I mean, right on. It sounds very, very interesting, very promising. So, uh, again, I, I signed up to get more information, and they're still starting out. So, again, we'll see what comes. Maybe, you know, if it is good, I may buy one. Right now, I'd love to buy one. Um, but, like anything else, I want to see more information and get more information. So, I had to go from there. Um so it'll only interact with whatever your wireless DMX technology is? No, where are you wired into? So it's a wire coming out. But again, if you think about it, you do one wire coming out to the first light, kind of like you're doing with the remote control, go up to the first light with a remote, and the rest of the lights is, you know, get the signal, and they're all slaves. Right. The first one, okay, boom. You got your wireless DMX, which you have hooked up. You're going you're just plugging a DMX cable into the first light. You have you know you can have it behind you. You can have a couple of lights behind you, just have one as your master, have the other one is still a slave, and the rest around the room a slave. And right. you this, you know, crazy light show. No. That it's you know, it, it rivals uh the light shows you see from like ape labs and stuff like that, you know. Huh. You talk about an expensive light, ape labs. Yeah. And you know the funny part is that Ape Lab uh, lights, <coughs> the new ones are not made in Germany anymore. They're made oh. in China. They're all made in China, aren't they? 
No, they were made in Germany before. Well, I know they used to be to like each light was like if you like the RF ones, I think they had a 15 watt diode and they're like 250 bucks a piece. They're those lights are the the, the Ape Lab yeah. lights, the original Ape Lab lights are really nice. And the other nice thing with the Ape Lab lights, they're nickel mill hydride batteries, which are much more easier to replace than lithium ion. Um, right. You don't have to worry about restrictions on shipping and stuff like that. Uh, like when I should have liked you, I had some restrictions because it was lithium ion. So I had to tell, yeah. you know, UPS was lithium ion when I shipped it to you. And it, it's, it's one of the things that, okay, fine, great, no big deal. But nickel metal hydrate, you don't have to worry about it because it's not as um, volatile. Yeah, volatile a battery is the chemical composition of it as a lithium ion is. So that's a great thing. So what uh, what gigs you got coming up right now? Uh, I got Friday night. I'm at the Westfield Homecoming here in town. I'll be DJing that from 9 to 11. Saturday night, I've got a uh, wedding reception in Shelbyville. Uh, it's uh, going to be a smaller one, just up lighting there. So it'll be, it'll be a buddy S type uh, event for me. I'm just running up lights. Nothing else. I mean, my sound. Well, nothing else. My sound and everything, of course, my booth. But but just up lights for that event. And then uh, next week, I'll be back at the bar here in town. And then the week after that, I will be... Uh, it'll be the beginning of September. So uh, it starts all over again. How many more weddings do you have left for this year? I've got the 10th, the 24th, October 8th, and I'm already getting inquiries about next year. So the year's not even over yet. So right now I've got the 20th, the 10th, the 24th, the 8th, and I just keep going. So. That's good. That's good. I, got, I have 19 more weddings to do this year. So yeah. the last one on New Year's Eve, which is first time doing New Year's Eve wedding in the 18 years of business. So it's like. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, wow. Um, that's, that's crazy for me. Uh, considering that, you know, I've been in business for a long time and it's the first time doing a New Year's Eve wedding. Uh, and it, it's, it's no different than any other wedding other than we're going an extra hour and at one o'clock in the morning versus at midnight. But, um, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it, uh, because, uh, not only a little bit of a challenge, but also it's just, you know, something different, uh, slightly different, you know, new New Year's Eve, but it's, <coughs> excuse me, um, it's, it's just crazy busy. I've had, I've had, uh, people, unfortunately I had to, uh, uh, turn down and tell them to go to other DJs. And if, if you're not a DJ, if you're watching this, um, if you're a bride or groom thinking of looking at hiring a DJ in your market, uh, I know here in Chicagoland area, a lot of DJs are heavily booked because DJs left because of COVID. Um, they didn't survive it. Their business, they closed their businesses up. Um, they said they're not doing it. Um, so there's less DJs out there. If you know, if you're looking for a DJ, uh, be it for next year, in whatever market you're in, hire them now. Don't wait. I had bride. Uh, we talked to her in June. Uh, her wedding's in November, and between the time that she we first contacted her at a Zoom meeting until uh, like uh, a few days ago, I think it was Friday, she sent an email to us asking about moving forward and stuff. Uh, we were booked for her date. I'm like, we're booked. I'm sorry, and it happens that fast. It's like you kind of you kind of snooze, you lose. So if you find a DJ that you like, don't hesitate. Don't don't try and bang your head against the wall. Just go ahead and lock them down. Any vendor, be it photographer, be it videographer, facility, anyone, make sure you lock it down right away. If you're in central Illinois, there's two great DJs in central Illinois. I know one of them is here right now. Um, Absolutely. And, you know, if you're in the, you know, if you're in the Springfield area, we go to Springfield, wouldn't you? I could, yeah. Yeah, if you're in if, if Springfield, you go to Mattoon. You know, that area right there. If Not you, too you know, many. You, know, um, you know, Danville, Charleston. I've been as far south as, uh, you know, uh, Sullivan, Farina. I mean, 
Yeah, I've been I've been a lot of places. Flora, you, go, you go Peoria? Uh, not I haven't. I have not okay. DJed in Peoria. What about uh, what about Pontiac, Illinois? But we're closer to like Champaign, you know. Champaign, Danville. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, okay. I'm so all, that's a little more, okay. Yeah, like it's a little you, more in my in my service area without it getting crazy oh, expensive. Oh no, no, that's, that's what I'm talking about. I, you know I, what I mean? I, I don't want you driving like eight hours. You know. Right. Well, I know people that do that. You know, those guys are out there, Rick Webb. <laughs> those guys are driving hours, you know, but they're making great money. So, you know, that's where it's if, at. If, if, if that, that's what they want to do. I get nothing with Rick Webb. I like Rick. I have had Rick. I, I love him. Before. I love him. I'm just he's saying, I know that nice guy has traveled for some gigs is all I was saying. He's a real nice guy. I'd love to meet him. Absolutely. Um, I would too, man. Very knowledgeable. Love watching his channel. Yeah, and you know, the the bad part, I don't know if you heard this or not, but YouTube just changed your algorithm for, uh, down to seven seconds for uh, music. It was 10 seconds. Now they changed it down to seven seconds. And uh, a, uh, Aaron was talking about uh, at the – he was because he was at D DJ Expo. Uh, a couple of big DJs were talking about it. And, like, uh, DJ Barr and a few other DJs, like, got their whole entire library wiped of their gig logs – because they were at like you know a, a, at like ten seconds per song, right? And now well, they the, whatever the price. old format was, yeah. So they just changed it. They just changed it down to seven seconds. So the gig log I just put up, I got down to six seconds. And most of the other stuff, also, I don't have much music in there. I, I try to do a lot of the copyright free music. Um, Me too. It just makes it easier to cover. You see people dancing. You know, I, I'd like to have just sometimes the music of what is going on so people have a, a feel. But a lot of times I just cover the music up with, you know, copyright free stuff. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's effective. <clears throat> oh, yeah. And then the other thing also, again, if you have not done so already. DJ Mike James, of course, he's on the Instagram and he's also on YouTube. He has a YouTube channel. Uh, please go to his YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe to his YouTube channel. Has a lot of great stuff. Gear review. He's gonna. He's doing a gear workshop. How to do stuff. How to work on stuff. Uh, Absolutely. Have, you know, I'll come out for that rock throw, rock wedge. How to set that up for a wireless system. Uh, which you know, again, I, I, I that that's that's pretty easy to do. But again, I don't think there's anyone on YouTube even showing it, even including Rockville. You know. No, they're not. Yeah, it's like. You have a product that does this. Why don't you show it and showcase it? But, anyways, it's it's one of the things that it it it, it it's a great product. Uh, it's a good light. Uh, they're in New York. Uh, for eight hundred bucks, you get a you get six lights in a case. I have uh, I have I have twelve lights. <laughs> I have I'm, I'm working on switches, it. Switches, and I had the newer generation with one switch. So, it's one of the things that um. They're still great lights. They still work great. Um, and I, I was actually talking to Tracy about, like, maybe we should buy one more case and have three, have, you know, 18 of the Rockville. Because, again, those those Chavez, uh, I love them, but had to plug them in, you know, most of the time. It is just like, ugh, I bought battery operated ones so I could have that freedom. And that's nice with the Chav with the, the Rockvilles is that they are free, uh, they got the freedom of that. But Again, I still have extra batteries if I have a battery goes bad. Yeah, they're not expensive to replace the battery, which is great. Three hundred dollars for battery is kind of ridiculous. So, yeah, that's what that's, that's what I think. But again, it, it's, it's whatever Shabby wants to charge. It's their battery. It's their product. So, it, you, you can buy three more rock wedges with that money. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You know, that's, you know that's, um, for three hundred and twenty dollars, I get to that's like a half, almost a half a case. Uh, rock it is in a case. You figure, you know, six hundred and forty dollars. You know, you might as well pay a few bucks more, like eight hundred bucks. There you go. You have six brand new lights with a charging case. So Agreed. It is, it is awesome. Well, Mike, thank you for coming in again. Thank you for coming in after your your gig. I, I appreciate it. you know you you came a little late, which is always awesome. Thank you. It so was much, a sir. learning experience for me over there tonight. You know what I mean? I was really oh, figuring no. it out. That's, so. that, that's awesome. I see your hat, EIU. Eastern oh, Illinois yeah. University. It's my alma mater, so. There you go. 
And uh, you know, you got you got to support your uh, your your school. You got to do that. Plus, again, you're in what you're what twenty minutes away, half hour away from Eastern. Yeah, about well, fifteen. I mean, it's fifteen. I'm just right outside of town. There you go. You're like you can follow a bet and get there. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Which I'm is, real close. Awesome. I I work in Charleston all the time. That's why I DJ at the bars and most of the, most of my weddings and all of my other events are generally in this area. You know, that's not to say I won't travel, but I mean, within reason. Yeah, you're again. You're not gonna travel. I'll, I'll travel to an hour. You know, me an hour. You know what I mean? Maybe two. Maybe one anything of these days. Else, maybe, maybe one of these days I'll have you come up here and uh, DJ with me and uh, uh, wedding and uh, you know do a collab. You know, again, I'm three and a half hours away up here in Chicagoland. But if I have one down south, which I do get them down down south, and what I mean south to me. Is like cake a key and stuff like that, yeah. which is a little bit closer to you. Um, you know, off of I eighty, uh, that way you're not coming too far north. And you know, like I have up, like I have a wedding this Friday up in Lake County, Northern Lake County, in Shea Lakes, and then I have Saturday a wedding, uh, basically on the border of the loop of downtown Chicago. It's the building is literally, it's called Loft on Lake. It's literally on Lake Street in Chicago, the city of Chicago, it's Ogden and Lake Street. And the L line is in front of the building, which starts the loop to go into downtown Chicago. Right. So basically, it's the border of the West Loop. If you walk across the street, you're West Loop. If you walk on the other side where the building's at, you're outside the loop. You're, you're considered a West Side. So it's like, you can't get much closer <laughs> to the loop than going, <laughs> just walking around. Yeah, the really. Our side of the street, you're in the loop, you know. So I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't recommend come up there, but it, it, that's because of the distance. Um, but yeah, one of these days, I got, I got, I got buggy. We'll figure it out, and I'd love to have you up here, you and your lovely. Oh, it'd be awesome. I'd love to work with you. Just pick your brain, hang out a little bit, oh, man. It'd be really cool. It's, it's, it'd be just cool hanging out. That'd be the first thing. But you and your lovely wife, and and you guys don't know his lovely wife is a uh, a photographer, a wedding photographer. Yes. So if you're looking for an awesome duo in the central Illinois area, if you're looking for a DJ, you're looking for a wedding photographer, an event photographer, and an event DJ, because uh, Mr. James here does more than just uh, weddings. Come and check look us out. Up. Look him up. You know, and again, if he's booked, I know another DJ, which is his friend as well, Nathan, which is DJ Fire, also does some great stuff too. Um, gotta do a shout out to him and a lot of love to him. Uh, he's an awesome guy, does some great reviews and, uh, these guys are powerhouses in central Illinois and, uh, a little bit in the Indiana area. And it, it's great having other great DJs that you can, that you can look on and, and watch stuff and learn from them as well. So you guys get a chance to do that. Uh, oh, got a comment. Uh, Mike James, which event are you, uh, excited for? Which event am I excited for? Yep. Uh, I'm really excited to do my next my August my October eighth wedding. I'm I'm super excited about that event. I just I'm just really curious about that historic venue. You know what I mean? Uplighting that, just making it look fantastic. I'm I'm excited as well. What 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 I can possibly do for the for this couple? You know what I mean? And I I think that I think that's what I'm really excited about right now. But I'm also excited about the EIU season starting. So. That'll be, be fun. That'll be that'll be new. It's it's something none of us have ever done, man. I'm telling you, it is it's a different animal, but it but it's it's gonna be fun because I I think I figured out how I'm gonna do it, you know. Then that's the thing, is that a little bit of a challenge is always a fun thing, a little spice of life. You know, you can't always eat uh hamburgers every day. You gotta eat some other things too. And you uh, gotta have a pizza, little... right? You're in Chicago. Yeah, oh, pizza. Yeah, good pizza. We have it, you know. Maybe <laughs> maybe, a, maybe a beef sandwich, you know. Come on. Italian beef. <laughs> oh, yeah. Funny thing, uh, there's a movie. Um, I just saw a thing on our local news uh, blurb. Um, they were talking about Italian beef sandwiches uh, here in Chicago that all these people have watched this uh, movie. And now they're like, they, they want to know what Italian beefs are. And they, they're ordering Italian beef sandwiches and have it shipped to them because there's restaurants will do that. Uh, some of the big restaurants like Portillo's and stuff like that, they'll actually do Bona, it. Bona or whatever, I know they do it. Yeah, Bona will do it. They'll ship, they'll cold ship Italian beef to you. So uh, if you ever want to do that, they will do that. Um, 
But yeah, it, it's. I will tell you guys, if you guys are not from Chicago, you're not here. Uh, the deep dish pizza is what we Chicagoans call tourist pizza. Now, there are Chicagoans like my wife, who I love. Uh, and be, it'll be 23 years our anniversary, the 22nd of this month. So we've been together for a very long time. She does like her Lou Malnati. She does like her Giordano's. She likes her deep dish. She's a cheese girl. Um, but like for me, I love thin crust. And most Chicagoans, when we go to pizza, uh, go order pizza, it's thin crust. It's tavern style, which is the little squares, not the big slices. And uh, have you guys ever watched Dave Portnoy uh, with Barstool Sports? And he does the uh, uh, one, uh, one bite uh, for pizza review on YouTube. He always has a hard time opening the pizza boxes up because in Chicago, there's two little flaps that lock in the top so the top doesn't blow open. I know in, in areas like outside Chicago, like in out east and out west, they can just open the top up. You just pull the top open. In Chicago, they have these little extra little pieces of cardboard that sit in the side, the little, little like love locks, as you can call them that, that keep the lid on so the lid doesn't open up. So it's 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 an extra like little security thing. And it's not because we're in a windy city. It's just because of the fact that we have cold air when it's winter time and we want hot pizza. So that's the reason why. And if you guys, one other thing, I'll look at this our mind nugget for windy city. When we talk about the windy city, it does not mean about the wind and temperature and weather. It is have to do with the hot air from the politicians. That is a, a phrase coined back about a hundred years ago. So if you look it up, uh, why is Chicago called the windy city? You can look it up. And it is because of the hot air of politicians. So there's another mind <laughs> nugget right there. It's not a DJ mind nugget, but there's some history for you. <laughs> Again, Mr. Mike James, thank you so much for coming in tonight. Again, Thanks follow me on Insta, follow him on YouTube. Uh, again, if you guys need anything, you're going to reach out to me. If you guys need links to anyone, please send me a message. You can send it here on Twitch. Uh, you could, If you haven't done so already, follow us on Twitch. Because the show is here, and I also DJ here on Twitch. I do music videos on Twitch. And again, this video will be rebroadcast on YouTube uh, about a week later, uh, Monday. Usually I broadcast, redo them. And my YouTube channel is uh, TDM Productions DJ1 on YouTube. So if you had not done so, go to YouTube. You can watch it on, on there to rebroadcast. And if you haven't watched other episodes, you can catch up and watch the, the first few episodes we've done here on Twitch. We've been doing this for quite a while on Instagram. We're moving to Twitch so that we can have it on multiple platforms and serve more people and get more information out there because the DJ Roundtable is about friendship, about information, and about learning and bettering our skills as DJs and making us better people as far as overall understanding of everything. And if we can help someone out, that's what we're here for. It's it's We're not trying to say we're the experts. We're just giving what we do, what works best, and maybe help you out a little bit here and there and say, hey, uh, no one's got a video on this. No one's done this. Let me show you how I do it. Does it mean it's the right way? No, but it does give you ideas and it makes you it makes you think. It makes you think outside the box because you only know what you know. And when you see other people do things, it's like, oh wow, you do that. That is cool, and that's what it's all about. And again, without people like Mr. Mike James here and DJ Aaron from uh, from Canada and uh, everyone else, you know, I can go down the list of all the people who've been on the show. Without everyone here coming in, spending time, uh, DJ Sharon tonight, uh, everyone coming in, uh, Matt, uh, DJ Salsis, everyone coming in, it's just awesome, awesome, awesome. Without them, it, 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 I can't have a show. And I got to thank them every time, and I really do appreciate them. And it just, again, show the love to them as well. Guys, have a good night. Be safe. Have a good one, buddy. See you later. All right, later.